All right, you guys ever have those days where just nothing you wanna do works out right? Well, we've done a ton of work over the past couple days. It is pouring down rain too forever. Like for the next 10 days, it's supposed to pour down rain and has for the past like five. So that's really messing up our outdoor painting plans. Um, actually, everything in this video is already done as I'm shooting this part right now. Um, I had another intro, but it was way more optimistic than I am right now. Nothing that we wanted to do really worked out like I wanted it to. I mean, we've gotten a ton of work done. It just was all kind of fail stuff. But what we're going to work on is you can actually see we already did uh, rust reform the inside of that bed. That actually turned out okay. Uh, but we raptor lined the underneath of the bed and the underneath of the cab. That's why I'm standing over here where you can't see. And then we also did all of our coating for the frame on the truck. So, uh, we're going to, we're just going to dive right in here. We got a ton of, a ton of pressure washing, a ton of cleaning, all that type of stuff to do on all this. Probably going to be time-lapse heavy because it's just not that interesting, uh, to draw out. So, uh, but we're going to get into it. It's been a, like five or six days of this, just not stuff, not going well, but Hey, we're still going to throw this truck together. We're still going to try to be done for the Daytona truck meet. It sounds like it's still going to happen with no problems. And uh, we're going to keep rolling here. So let's just uh, let's just get into it. We uh, are going to plug up all these holes. And you want to tell them the change of plans? Because it wasn't my idea. We're going to at least attempt to actually coat this all ourselves. Um, all right. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's doable now. I, I was super intimidated before. And that bed just took the wind out of my sails. I don't know about Spencer's, but like it was intense. Like three, four, five days of scrubbing grease. So I just didn't want to touch this. But it doesn't look that bad though. So. so yeah, we're gonna make sure we don't get water into the engine because we are super particular people here um, about that. And then we're gonna do a mediocre job coating this frame. Then we're going to get to more pressure washing. I apologize for the amount of pressure washing we've had on the channel recently, but that's just what the only thing we've done with our lives for the past two weeks. Also, hating Pennsylvania weather today, or in the past couple weeks as well, because it is just windy as can be. We are testing how well we lift. <laughs> we supported that cab over there, I can tell you that. So it doesn't seem like it's moved, but you can see the bed liner has like blown away. Look at those trees swaying. So after pressure washing and a lot of simple green, we got this guy pretty much all cleaned up. I mean, there's gonna be a few places and stuff that we gotta do by hand inside here, but we are we are largely on our way. Oh yeah, he's in pajamas and slippers. Uh, Don't show him. I know, I shouldn't have. But we're largely on our way to getting this thing coated. Pretty excited about that. And then we are also over here working getting ready should have raptor lining coming up here pretty shortly and just as i said that look here what we got delivered box of something or other in here let's see i think this might be might be what we need to finish this video up there it is so let's see i don't know i've never done this before gonna have to read the instructions i think this is yeah we got the gun here and then I think just two like basic sort of kits here. Let's see. 
Yeah, I don't know if it comes with a Raptor in the bed, but if it did, that would be cool. So there's everything, and like it says right here, tinnable to our specific color. I have our tinted base coat right here. Does not have um, the clear binder in it, which I am not a paint guy, so somebody else out there is going to know way more than I do. But everything I heard was that the clear binder you did not want in it, it sticks better without it for mixing with the Raptor liner. So I think we're going to take this part here, look a little bit at the instructions, and then I don't know that we're going to get to the truck bed here today to coat it because we actually patched up some of the stuff there. And I know it doesn't look that nice, but the cab is ready to go. It's we have touched up, done everything we needed to on it, and we're going to try to do that. We might even might attempt the rear end over here as well because that if it, it it might rain in a few hours so we're trying to get what we can get done here but that we could pull inside the garage so not as big of a deal on that in the box here we got i guess that's just the all right 24 ounce bottles of the actual liner stuff yep okay four bottles of it all right four bottles of that and then i don't know what this is the hardener okay just a little mixing cup in here then these are probably the instructions do we think do you think we should use these i would just throw them out all right so we snuck in the house here lance's wife is a saint um because we are uh mixing this stuff here in the kitchen uh <laughs> using her measuring spoons and one of the kitchen knives over there uh, to open that up. So there's our paint color, guys. That looks right, man. It's beautiful. This little container was $95. But we wanted to mix all these at once so that we're all ready to go. Um, by the way, the paint code for this truck, because I'm not secretive about the paint code. Some guys out there talk about, you know, keep their paint codes a secret like it's some old family, like it's the Bush's baked bean recipe or something, or they have the secret to Coca-Cola. Um, but it's 817K if anybody is interested. I've had a ton of people ask. So we just got to divide this up between our bottles here. So admittedly, we tried to spoon this stuff in for just a little bit, but that was terrible because um, we... We are trying to, you know, make sure we got the same mixture across and we don't have a big jug or anything really that's good to to put all this stuff into. So, uh, this syringe or medicine, what is it called? Syringe. Syringe thing actually works pretty well. So this was actually a pretty good little system here. I'm sure some people won't like it, but this worked really good to divvy out the right amount. And then we got all of our bottle mi bottles mixed. We're ready to go. Um, took maybe 10 minutes or something like that to get everything in there. Hardest part is just keeping track of how much you put in like which bottle you were on as you were filling it up, but the measurement should be exact other than we forgot a few times <laughs> when you get in the middle here, it gets confusing. Let's get out here and see what we can do. All right, we got our hardener out here. These are 24 ounce bottles and it's mixed three to one and they come with a cup that's already marked for eight ounces. So that's pretty easy. All right, now let's flash it. That's it, I think. Just about a little bit more. All right. Right about there. I think that's yeah. as good as we're going to get. Can you do it? Nah, I think I got it. Okay. Actually, you're doing great. And I'm doing it through a camera. Yeah, I'm impressed. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm amazing. The instructions are here. Um, now, the thing we're going to run in a little bit close on it is not supposed to rain tomorrow, but it says it's supposed to be 72 hours before it comes in contact with water. So we may be covering this up. It dries in 60 minutes, but uh, I think Sunday afternoon it's supposed to start, start raining. All right, so we got our stuff wiped down. We got our Raptor liner mixed up, ready to go. We off camera, well, we're just finishing up, wrapped up the entire cab so we don't get any of the overspray on it because I've heard this stuff's pretty much a nightmare to get off and uh, should be dry enough now that we can move forward. We're gonna try a little spray on this old bed here. See what it looks like first. Well, that spray's a lot different than I expected. All right, we're ready to start spraying, but watch this ad before we do because we need to figure out a way to pay for the next Raptor liner kit after we mess this one up.
as the sun goes down and it's hey, somebody's parachute. Hold on. Paragliding. Or para Parasailing. Or para Whatever para that is up there, I don't know if you can see him. He's way up there, but zoom that veil. Here, here. Here, zoom it, yeah. I can't see it because I'm like, I got go. it on the tripod. You got it. Yeah. Right there. Huh. Very cool. I guess that's the real social distancing right there. Pretty much done with this one. Looks so good. It actually looks way redder on the camera than it does in person, but uh, yeah. Just finishing up a few little spots that we got here. One of the tricks that we learned from an old wise body shop man was, and this is probably with, for paint and everything, we just don't ever do body work. Uh, start with all of the detail work around the edges and stuff first, because then when you go over with it later, otherwise like it'll build up too much and you'll have really thick spots around all the edges if you do it after you already sprayed. So start with that stuff. That's kind of what we did for most of it. I forgot a few times, but it looks really, really good. I really couldn't be more happier than what I am. So my phone died there, as you saw, um, and I was trying not to show you too much. I was trying to hide it behind the blazer, but let's go over and take a look at our final product on this Raptor lining stuff. Yes, it's pouring down rain. So here is our final product, and it is quite pink. We followed the recommendation as far as the tint mixture, made sure it was the right color, looked right in the can. Um, it did look a little pink when we were mixed up, as you saw there. Um, it I don't know. I don't know. It even looked like it was maybe a little bit more burgundy when we were doing it. But uh, everything else, I mean, it turned out really nice. Like the coat and everything like that looks really, really nice. I'm happy with it. Hardened up. We had plenty of time for it to sit here before it rained. So I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, it just came out a little bit lighter. Uh, the bed itself, I mean, everything looks pretty good. No, we didn't worry about that patch over there. We'll have to do something else with that on the other side. But uh, when we painted up in as far as we kind of could there on each, on each of the bed sides. But the truth is, uh, it will look okay underneath the truck because as soon as this gets in the shade, um, right now we've got pretty good constant light on it, but once it gets in the shade, it darkens it up a lot. And I don't think it's going to look that bad underneath the truck, especially because, I mean, there's going to be a lot of other stuff there and it's not going to be right against the burgundy. So this is what we're sticking with, guys. So... I don't know what else to say. There's no way it comes off or anything like that. The only thing would be to recoat it, but that's another like three or hundred and fifty dollars in paint and raptor lining material and everything like that. So this is what we got. I don't I don't know. And now that this is all finished up. We're gonna get to working on the truck frame and getting it coated. Should uh, should have some fun doing that. So we'll see how see how that goes. So after all that pressure washing and spraying, this is what our kind of final product here. We cleaned up the garage floor, put some plastic down because we are ready to coat this frame. There's going to be a few spots we got to touch up along the way, but we did try to, as much as we possibly could, get up in here, but there is still some grease up in there. There's just no good way to get it, so we'll, we will skip those areas. We'll probably, uh, you know, try to get under and around the wire stuff as much as we can. If we don't, you might have to pop that out. Otherwise, I think we're pretty much ready to go. We are not using POR15. We are using rustproof MD. It seemed like reviews wise this seemed to be a little bit better what people prefer i've heard that it's really nasty which is why we put the plastic down because it will just destroy your garage floor anything you're wearing um it's supposed to be pretty nasty stuff but it pretty much sticks to anything from what i hear um so it should be should be good for this and we got our brushes here and we are we're actually using really nice brushes um just because those are the ones we had in bulk randomly uh, but we are going to uh, have to lay on our back to get the bottom edge, and uh, it should be, a, should be a fun thing here. Oh, yeah. It oh, might... my gosh. That stuff is thick. thick. Woo! 
So I'm going to try my best to film this. We got gloves on because this stuff sticks with you for like weeks on end. Um, I do not want to get it on my camera. And uh, I have a habit of like dripping oil and transmission fluid all over my camera anytime I work on anything that's liquidy. And I think I'm going to end up ruining it if I <laughs> get up close with anything here. So I'll do my best to film it, but we'll see what happens. All right, we're working out of smaller containers. I'm going to start right here just so you can see a little bit of it because, you know... Uh, my detail work up here is going to be a little tougher, but this stuff is, is no joke. Oh man, it's thick. I thought it was going to like show like every brush stroke and kind of, but it's just so, super textured. It is extremely thick. Like I, I've never coated any frames before, so this is all new to me. <laughs> and it dries pretty quick too, it seems like. Yeah, I don't think this is going to have any problem sticking to anything. <laughs> I think you could put this directly on an oil stain <laughs> and it would stick. Here's what we got so far. I am actually super impressed. It's coming out really, really shiny nice. Let's go over and check out what all Lance has gotten done. What you got there, man? Oh, I've got a lot more done than you. Well, do you have these like wires and stuff? No, no. All right, so... We got this back end pretty good. I don't know if you're supposed to do the leaf spring or if this stuff will crack at all, but we did the leaf spring. Um, so we're going to find out. The only real thing that we found, like we're still still doing stuff. It was a little, just a little damp down in here. So we're holding on that until um, it dries out a little better. Um, it does like to drip like down under everything. And so we keep having to um, go back over, but because it's been like an hour or something like that. And that's, I mean, that's how much we got done. And we got, I did the, underneath this whole frame rail. I wanted to do that first. I have not done that side over there yet. And then all this stuff. But uh, the brushes just, just start to dry out as you're going. So they're hard as a rock. We're pretty close to it when we were getting done here. So we're going to switch out for some new brushes and uh, kind of keep going here. But it looks, I mean, it looks really, really nice. I'm I'm very happy with how it's turning out. We just got, we got to get under it and do all the fine detail work and stuff yet here. And here's what all Lance got done on this side. He didn't do any of the underside stuff, so he was able to make it a little further. But, uh, yeah, looking, looking pretty good. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Uh, we even got some extra help here. And uh, we have one, a couple sections that came out really, really nice, and they've dried mostly, not 100% not dry. Everything's still tacky, even though it's been several hours. Um, and uh, I don't know, it, I gotta just show you here. This here is kind of the section that I figured out how to do, um, and that was put it on extremely thin, but it literally takes forever. I mean, you just have to dab the brush um, into the metal like like forever and then make sure you brush it down and get all all of the possible extra on like thinner than anything i've ever seen even though the stuff is super thick then up here is what i did before and it's still drying um but it like expanded <laughs> um i didn't think i put it on that thick i mean i really didn't feel like i did but it is just thick on top of everything. But at this point, we're kind of stuck. So I don't know. I don't know what to say. And it even like bubbled up here. And it's not from grease or anything like that. Because I did a bunch of other sections and didn't have, as soon as I did like the dab and just make it as thin as possible, it wasn't an issue. But anywhere where you put it on in a way that you would consider to like be normal, <laughs> everything else I felt like I was just thinning down. It just did this bubbling up stuff everywhere. So maybe when it dries, I don't know, maybe it'll shrink back up. I don't know. But we got the frame horns and everything up here done and with the you know thinner method. And they all came out looking pretty nice. And then this whole side is pretty much bubbly again. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. So it uh, we're just going to let it dry overnight or however long it takes. I'll have to look and see exactly how long it says to dry. But definitely got some like runs and different stuff down there. But this section here came out really, really nice. Exactly what I would expect. So, uh, I don't know. Little disappointed at this moment. And we're back outside now here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed <laughs> that video. Um, I sorry, I apologize if it jumped around a little bit because like I said, this was filmed over several, several days and, uh, just it's been uh, it's been rough but uh we're gonna see this is shortly after the coating got done on the truck frame and we'll see hopefully it dries up and uh 
and, and doesn't look so bad. Uh, I really was unhappy with how it came out because when we were putting it on, it looked perfect. Like I couldn't, I was so happy. I thought we were going to have a really, really nice looking frame. We weren't putting it on super heavy. We followed the instructions. We cleaned the frame properly, all that stuff. And it still bubbled up and it seemed like there was more of the coating on there than we even put on. So I don't, I don't know, but, uh, it just, uh, you know, it's how stuff goes sometimes, but the, uh, the pink on the underside of these beds and then under the, under the cab that we're pretty much just going to leave <laughs> because it's going to be down under there. It actually, when it's in the shade and th stuff, it looks a lot darker. So I don't think it's actually going to look bad once it's on the truck, even though it looks very pink now. The only place it might be an issue is under the wheel wells. Um, otherwise the coating actually came out really nice. So pretty happy with that, but that's where I'm going to end it here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like subscribe, share, have a great day.